friends. Welcome back to Brewing TV. I'm Josh. I'm Ben. I'm Lindsay. Dan. I'm Grant. And I'm Cedar. In this episode of Brewing TV, we'll cover summer serving techniques to help make your brewing experience a successful one. We'll be covering some of the more common techniques for guaranteeing cold, foam-free pours at your next outdoor gathering this summer. way to serve beer at an outdoor party is a keg in a can which is traditionally a trash can but in our case you can see it's a fermentation bucket. So it's hot out and you got a keg full of beer and you want to serve it but you got to keep it cold. Keg in a can is really perfect for barbecues, family parties and really any impromptu gathering that's outdoors. Uh, you do want to start with a cold keg because it's not really practical to try and cool it down just using the ice that's in the bucket. So you'll take your cold keg and put it in your can or bucket. It's really important to get in as much ice as you can. It takes about two hours for an already cold keg not on ice to heat up 10 degrees, whereas it takes about 16 hours to cool it back down to serving temperature. Get her packed in good there. And as it's sitting out in the sun, the ice will start to melt, but that's actually going to increase the efficiency of cooling because the water that melts and surrounds the keg will have a greater contact with the surface of the keg. So the easiest way to start serving beer is get yourself a foam-free tubing kit and go ahead and just throw it onto that ball lock. Keep in mind though, you want to keep this line nice and cold. That's not just going to be keeping your beer cold, it's also going to be reducing the foam that you get out of that line. If you're going to be serving outside, you're going to want to add pressure to the keg. The way you can do this with the most control is by using a five pound CO2 tank. Hook it up and then you can control using the gauge. However, a five pound CO2 tank is pretty bulky for an impromptu party. So what we have is the Sankey Keg hand pump, which is primarily used with commercial kegs, but we have the home brewer's version. The ball lock hand pump functions the exact same way as the Sankey Keg. Hand pump, just hook it up to the end. Give it a couple pumps, Grant. I'm gonna get some beer. Let's give Grant some of this mystery beer. Keep in mind that if you're gonna use a hand pump, you gotta drink the whole keg at the same party because this is gonna add oxygen to your beer, which is gonna make it go stale a lot faster. Yeah, that's good beer. We're going to be talking about ways to dress up your event a little bit. Uh, we'll eventually be getting into a big draft board for large outdoor events, uh, but first we'll talk about ways to dress up a keg in a can. The first is with this handy dandy faucet to disconnect adapter. You simply thread it onto your faucet instead of mounting a faucet on a shank. Make sure you have an MFL disconnect. Put that on there like so. You'll want to use a wrench to really crank this down. You don't want any leaking and then simply put it on the outpost on your keg. This is a great way especially to mount a stout faucet on your keg and take a stout on the go, serve it like a true professional and get that nice Guinness pour. Something you'll run into often when you're dispensing outdoors is foam. This can be prevented by picking up some pipe insulation at your local hardware store. Um, instead of trying to keep your lines cold with ice alone, by using some of this insulation, you can really keep your lines cold for longer very inexpensive solution. It's roughly three or four dollars for a six foot length. Now we'll take you back to show you the full on setup uh, for your big outdoor events, particularly weddings. This is what we call a draft wall. And Come join us. Do, 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 do. And meet the wall. This is how we're gonna class up the act a little bit. This is great for outdoor weddings or larger style events where you need a nice display and an easy way for guests to serve themselves. Start by designing your stand. You just need some sort of frame to support what you're using. Then get your display. This can be a chalkboard, a whiteboard, uh, some nice hardboard, easy to wipe liquid away from. Get the shortest length shank available. You only have about a quarter to a half an inch to go through. Get a one inch drill bit. Uh, once you've got your holes drilled, just simply insert the shank and secure it on the back. You can use any style faucet for something like this, so you can have your stout faucet, you can use your forward seal faucets, uh, and you can also hook up a little faucet for soda or something like that. Uh, behind you'll see the insulated lines coming off, that'll help keep the beer cold 
and make sure we don't have lots of foaming out of the taps. Some benefits to having a serving setup such as this one is, number one, visibility. No one will have to ask, where's the beer? It's right here. Secondly, what's on tap? You can put everything up here. Why someone might want to go with this beer or choose this one over the next one or the soda pop on the end. Also the usability. You won't need to have someone there playing bartender. Instead, somebody can help themselves, which is a great way to make sure that the brewer can still be a part of the bash. Get out and enjoy your own event. Hey neighbors, we're here to talk to you about draft boxes. Draft boxes are also commonly referred to as a jockey box. They may seem familiar to you because of beer festivals and other events where a large amount of beer is being served. So the main way that the jockey box helps give you cold beer out of the taps with a warm keg is that it has an internal heat exchanger. The plate that we have here works best when it's under direct contact with ice. The stainless steel coils should be submerged in an ice and water bath. Uh, the reason that the plate needs to be in contact with the ice is that as it melts and water builds up in the cooler, the ice tends to float and leaves your plate in contact with warmer and warmer water as you run more beer through it. So it's important to periodically drain the cooler and top it off with more ice. It connects just like many other draft systems. You have your keg and your gas. And the last part of the equation is the ice. Ideally, you'll start with cold or at least chilled kegs because that'll always give you the best results. But if your kegs are at room temperature or higher, you'll naturally need to keep the serving pressure on them higher to force more CO2 into solution and give you the proper carbonation on your beer. Jockey boxes can usually handle higher serving pressures because of the in flow resistance of the interior coils. So you're usually going to want to go around 30 PSI to get a good pour. If you're getting excessive foam, you can always dial that back. One thing you'll notice on this beautiful sunny day here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, is that we're using clear glass pint glasses. And really, this beer will get skunky in about two minutes flat. So we're gonna tell you a little more about that later, about uh, the proper glassware to use during events and outdoors. Cheers. Choosing the glassware that you go with is almost as important as choosing which beer to put on tap in the first place. Uh, if you're doing keg in the can or if you're doing any other draft uh, event outside, you're probably going to go with plastic cups. Clear cups will allow you to see the beer a little bit better, so that can enhance your presentation. But if it's sunny at all, your beer can skunk in a matter of seconds, so choosing an opaque cup is probably going to be better for serving and enjoyment of the beer. More intimate backyard bashes, maybe a food pairing, going with something like the tasting paddle is also a good choice. If you want to take beer on the go but you don't want to bring a full keg or CO2 setup, you can go with growlers. They hold 64 ounces of liquid. Uh, we do have a growler filler so you can fill from a draft setup like a jockey box or a keg fridge. You just insert it into the tap, run it to the bottom of the growler and go ahead and fill. It's important to fill from the bottom up That'll help you avoid foaming and retain as much CO2 as possible. Stronger beers do really well in smaller glasses like goblets, and the tulip style of the goblet and tulip glasses will help trap the aromas near the top, allowing you to experience those aromas more fully. We do have some glasses with etched bottoms. The etching provides sites of nucleation for the CO2, causing it to rise and carry those aromas to the top of the glass more quickly. If you are doing American style ales, those are typically going to go in a 16 ounce pint glass. English style ales you might find in a stein or similar uh, glass or in an imperial pint glass which holds a full 20 ounces. So you can fill right to the little bulge here and then you get the head in the top still getting a full 16 ounces of liquid. Well thanks for joining us today. Hope that you learned something. Because here at Northern Brewer, we are home brewers, here to serve other home brewers. And we won't rest until you brew your best. Join us next time, where we'll be brewing some of our favorite summer recipes. On that note, all for brew. And brew, brew for, for all. all.